David, thanks so much for stopping by. Always great to have you in studio. My pleasure. As you know, yesterday was the big day. The inspector general testifies about his report. And, you know, and he made clear that he struggled to understand how an operation of this magnitude was never briefed to the attorney general. Yet you have the attorney general saying the report vindicated him and <laughs> President Obama is going to stand by his man. Well, you have two things. One, remember, this is an attorney general who has testified before Congress that he doesn't read emails, he doesn't read briefing memos, and he rarely listens to oral briefings. So his defense basically is that he's out of it, and he doesn't know, and therefore he shouldn't be held accountable. Back during the Clinton administration, when he was involved in the pardon of Mark Rich, a, a criminal, he said the same thing afterwards. He said, well, I didn't know. And yet, as U.S. attorney in Washington, for a year and a half, he'd been leading the investigation of Mark Rich. He knew exactly what was going on then. It, it beggars the mind to believe that he did not know what was going on now. Either everyone in the Justice Department is completely complicit and incompetent uh, and are willing to fall on their swords and, uh, and destroy their careers in order to protect the Attorney General or the Atten Attorney General knew. And it, it just is not credible to believe that he didn't. The President is just as bad. Uh, he went on television yesterday in an interview with Univision, and he said, well, this, of course, was a program that started under George Bush. Not true. It started in 2009 under Barack Obama. Uh, he was corrected on that, and then he said, well, people make mistakes. But the fact of the matter is that just like everything else that's gone wrong since January of 2009, this president and everyone in his administration try to blame it on their predecessor. Mm -hmm. This one is his. This one belongs to him and this Justice Department. And the, and the Inspector General's report, which I expect they hoped would exonerate them, in fact makes them look like they should all be cashiered and sent home. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happened yesterday, is, is if you watch that hearing, so many of the members of Congress were just baffled to know that here you've got Jason Weinstein, who works for Lanny Brewer, he resigns, and Lanny Brewer is still there. Right. I mean, most of the people have either been promoted or given raises uh, because they want to keep them quiet. That's basically what's going on here. And so we'll protect your career. We'll keep you in the Justice Department. We'll give you a raise if we have to. We'll give you a promotion. We'll transfer you somewhere else. But just please keep your mouth shut. It's, a, it's sort of a traditional, classic government cover-up of a program that was that was was generated by the wrong people for the wrong reasons and then went worse. Uh, and the idea that they are allowed to do this, the idea that for partisan reasons so many Democrats are just sitting there and letting it happen is incredible to me. This is not some little financial problem. Mm -hmm. This is not something that, uh, uh, that can be passed off. You've got hundreds of dead people, yeah. including a federal agent. Absolutely. Uh, and the, uh, if you go back through that report, I mean, some of it, if it weren't so tragic, it would be funny. The defense that uh, Brewer made to the IG when he asked, How, why, did you, why did you put this false language in the letter to Congress that said you knew it, knowingly went, uh, allowed guns to cross the border? He said, well, that isn't technically untrue. We negligently let them cross the border. We didn't do it knowingly. Well, in fact, they did do it knowingly, and that's a heck of a defense. I mean, the, the attorney general's defense is that he's incompetent and doesn't know his job. And his deputy's defense is that uh, they're, they're just negligent, not uh, criminally liable. And you could go on and on about it, but, you know, that so many of them talked about the infamous February 4th letter. And, you know, there they've got emails that show that he sent it, to, you know, to his home uh, computer. Um, and, you know, he, he tells the inspector general, well, you know what, I don't recall if I ever right. read the letter. And the inspector general took him at his word. Right. Well, I still expect, given the, um, given the report that the inspector general did, that he's liable to be treated in the future like one of the whistleblowers because this is not an administration that tolerates this kind of disloyalty from those that they place their trust in. And the, the, the Congress uh, is going to have to make sure that those people who've told the truth are protected, because you can bet mm -hmm. that they're going to start attacking him as they attack the agents. I mean, the argument that they put out at one point that the whistleblowers actually did the whole thing themselves just to get at their superiors and made it all up. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you follow the line of, of lies that began when this was first uncovered. And you, two things strike you. One, the, the lengths to which this administration will go up to cover up wrongdoing on the one hand, and, the, and the arrogance privilege. with which they proceed both t toward Congress, the media, and the public. And secondly, the, 
the, the courage that it takes for these people to stand up to him. Think about this for just a second, and I think everybody that's listening or watching us should think about this. If those agents hadn't gone to CBS and to the Congress, mm -hmm. today, the President of the United States, as part of his campaign, would be saying, we need gun control because guns that are being sold in this country by federal firearms licensed dealers are going to the drug gangs in Mexico and are resulting in the deaths of American citizens. If they had not gone uh, to become whistleblowers, mm -hmm. when that federal agent was killed, they would have blamed that on the gun dealers that they forced to sell the guns. Yes. That's, that's how important what they did was to, to, to finding the truth and the facts behind all this. And that's what Congressman Kelly brought up uh, yesterday and told us again today. I mean, what kind of message does this send to those whistleblowers? You know, he's like, you know, does, does it say to them that we protect those at the top and those at the bottom? Well, they're vulnerable just like you guys uh, these were. These are casualties, collateral yeah. damage. It's all right. Yep. And, and, uh, and, and these whistleblowers and others who, who would come forward to this kind of thing, have to, they have to look at this and say, we know we've risked our career. Mm -hmm. We know that our careers are basically over because they'll get you in the end. But all that we've done in terms of trying to clean up an agency that we love, and these guys went to the press because they were so upset mm -hmm. uh, at what was happening, the people that were the bad actors in this case have been rewarded, yeah. and we've been punished. So I think, you know, it's, 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 there aren't going to be millions of people who come out and vote based on this issue because the media has largely ignored it, except when they've had to. But the fact of the matter is that anybody who sees what has happened in the Fast and Furious case and the way they've handled it should not simply be upset about the facts of this case, but should realize that this is business as usual for an administration that's off the rails in terms of the rule of law and in terms of the balance of power and in the terms of the way they're supposed to relate to Congress and the public. And I know you said this may not be a hot issue, but so many of the members of Congress we talk to, they'll tell you right up front, they say, I have these town hall meetings, and there are so many questions from them saying, how can they do this? How can they get away with this? Well, gun owners care. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think most gun owners out there and most Second Amendment supporters know that this is part and parcel of this administration's desire to get us, if you will, without having to confront us publicly and head on, because they know they can't win in Congress. They know they can't win in the courts. What they're trying to do is, is come up with reasons and excuses to reopen the case and say, okay, now you're doing this, and we want to take after you for that reason. And what this has done is revealed one of these tactics, one of these strategies that they're using, and has knocked it down. But other people should also see mm -hmm. what's happening here because it's important and it's a, it's a when an administration can do this uh when an administration can just ignore the congress and this is an administration that has sent the attorney general of the united states our chief law enforcement officer on numerous occasions to the senate and to the house and he perjured himself yes and there is no other way to put it that's what he did this is the does this build respect for the rule of law among the citizens of this country? I don't think so. Yeah. Another issue they brought up yesterday while they were uh, talking with the Inspector General was this whole issue of media matters and Daily Caller getting these emails right. that show that the DOJ was working with media matters to, to you know, uh, go after reporters, myself and Cam included, That's to right. smear them because they didn't like what they were hearing. This is not an administration that deals in issues. This is an administration that deals in personalities. You can see it at the presidential level. The whole thing is not... Uh, Governor Romney is wrong on the issues. It's Governor Romney's a rotten person who you shouldn't have anything to do with. Uh, it's not that uh, the whistleblowers weren't telling people what was true. It's that the whistleblowers are not perfect people either. It's not that uh, what the reporter's saying is wrong. It's that the reporter shouldn't be saying it because the reporter's doing it for ambitious reasons or doesn't like us or had something in his past or her past that we can exploit. These are people who are involved in character assassination for purely political and ideological reasons. And what the Daily Caller has done has, has unearthed the emails through the Freedom of Information Act that shows they're doing it on our dime. Mm -hmm. That the taxpayers are paying for a massive political operation designed to smear the character of, of American citizens who are just doing their job. You know, and I think a lot of people, including uh, us, probably suspect, we did suspect this, but now, you know, we, we've got the proof of it. And, you know, what do you do? I mean, what do you think needs to happen here? I know I talked with some members of Congress who said, hey, we got to go about after their tax exemption status. You know, the, the, um, the, the media, and everybody was so upset when 
Richard Nixon kept an enemies list, a list of people he didn't like. So they said, well, this is terrible for a president to do that, even if they couldn't prove he did anything against him. Here we have an administration complicit with the media developing enem an enemies list that they can all go after. Like a propaganda machine. It, it is a propaganda machine. And the terrible part of I've been involved uh, at the political level in this country for 40 years. I was going to ask you, yeah. And I've been involved in every presidential campaign since the 60s. I've been involved in lots of other campaigns and a lot of advocacy activities, not just for the NRA, but through a whole career. And I can tell you right now that I have never seen a year, never seen a cycle where the mainstream media is so in bed mm -hmm. with a political party and an ideology. They will do anything. You see it not just on the, on the refusal, except when forced to, to cover Fast and Furious. Uh, the, you know, in the news in the last few days is what happened in Libya. They will not even cover that. And uh, you've, got a very, you've got a very serious problem there. Yeah, and you have a president who tells Univision, hey, you know what I learned? I learned that you can't change uh, Washington from the inside, so you got to go from the outside. That should scare everybody, because the outside to me means places like the UN. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All righty. Well, as you said, the election right around the corner, a lot of It's today. around the corner. It's the most important election we've ever faced. This is just more evidence of that. Uh, and I think, uh, I think that people who believe in the Second Amendment, there are a lot of reasons why this, important, why this election is important, but for believers in the Second Amendment, there can't be a more important election because everything we've accomplished, everything we've accomplished in the last few decades could be canceled out by the results of this election.